Snackers, want to learn how we are bringing app teams and sec teams together? Check out this episode of DevNet Snack Minute, where we talk about app dynamics with Cisco Secure Application. Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I am one of the managers of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. And welcome to episode 10 of DevNet Snack Minutes. If this is your first time joining us, DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute all things Dev Cisco DevNet, uh, where we learn about APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that you want to learn about. And the cool thing that we're going to be talking to you about today is App Dynamics with Cisco Secure Application. And we have a guest with us talk to you about this. Keith, please introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, name is Keith O'Brien. I work uh, in the global security architecture team here at Cisco. And over the past couple of years, we've been working really hard to deliver a, uh, a new feature within App Dynamics called Cisco Secure for Applications. And I'm here to talk to you about that today. That's that's cool, Keith. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of talk within Cisco about cloud native and, and cloud native adoption. And so um, can you kind of help us understand how is cloud native changing the way that people think about security in the enterprise? Yeah, sure. So um, in order to do that, I usually like to rewind a little bit and go through the history of how applications were developed and how they kind of molded in and how we think about network security. And the traditional um, way applications were developed is you had a, a three-tier model, right? You had a front end uh, of the application, you had a mid-tier logic uh, a tier of the application, and then a back-end database. And that really, that whole architecture is what uh, drove a lot of the network security concepts that we're all used to, things like ACLs and firewall rules. We all know how uh, very well how to open up TCP ports between those different layers of an application. But as applications um, changed into a, a microservices way and cloud native type of architectures where instead of having these discrete three tiers, you have uh, potentially uh, tens or hundreds of different components of the application all scattered around, all kind of expanding and contracting based on workload. That uh, very clean three tier division kind of got exploded. And now we have to think about, well, how do we apply that same kind of security policy that we had in that three-tier model um, now into a, a microservices kind of model where um, you may have um, uh, those services kind of uh, instantiating themselves and disappearing maybe on a, a per minute basis. So how you can do things like um, applying uh, those policies in that kind of dynamic environment is really what changed a lot um, as far as uh, how network security is approached in an enterprise. And then there's the, the people and process side of it. So along with that were changes in how uh, departments and, and people were structured within an organization. And uh, that's the whole you know, DevOps movement. And that in, in turn impacted how we're approaching security, right? So if you're pushing out multiple code updates a day, uh, potentially even hundreds of code updates a day, how does your security team keep up with that? How can you do things like threat modeling in that kind of environment. Uh, whereas before, in more of a, a monolithic or um, waterfall kind of approach, it was very easy to do a threat model in the application. You would ship that application and then do a threat model in the next release. That all kind of explodes, you know, as we get into more of this agile development mindset. And that, that Keith, that cues me into the, the next question that I wanted to bring up. And, you know, outside of egos, um, why do you think app and sec teams don't ha have so much friction? <laughs> yeah, there's a little of that. Yep, there's a little of that. But you know, I I look at it. Um, a, a lot of it. There's technology. I'm going to talk about how technology can help us in that area. But a lot of it is how people are measured and rewarded in these organizations, right? So if you look at how a development team is typically the metrics around that development team, how they're measured and rewarded, it's usually around feature velocity, right? The more the, the faster and, and, and more features they can get into that application, that's how they're typically measured and that's how their uh, salary views, all those kind of metrics that go around the, the human um, uh, occur. And likewise with security, 
they're usually the metrics that they follow are the number of vulnerabilities that are open, um, the size of the threat surface, um, how rapidly they close those vulnerabilities, um, the number of exploits that that were reported, and those are fundamentally at odds, right? So if I'm if my feature velocity is very high, then I'm inherently increasing my my attack surface on the application. So that that you know naturally creates friction. Um, but there are things that we can do, right? I'm having flashbacks into uh, uh, trying to get applications stood up and then having InfoSec slap our hands and say, you can't do this. <laughs> so <laughs> I understand. So how, how, do we, how do we solve for that friction then? Well, I mean, certainly there, there are things that we can do in the organization, right? Um, and mature organizations are starting to do that, starting to, to merge some of these uh, parts of the organization, uh, you know, doing the whole DevSecOps thing of, Maybe embedding a security person into the development team, but here at Cisco, um, you know, outside of that, that's where this whole idea of Cisco Secure for Applications came about. And we looked at that problem. That was really the the fundamental problem we started with: is how can we build a a, a bridge between the uh, application security team and the application development team, or just even the security team and the development team. And we had a, a pretty good foundation with app dynamics and application performance monitoring, but we wanted to extend that and give the same kind of uh, views that a security team would be used to, policy kind of views that they would be used to in something like an IPS, an IDS, or a, a firewall, but making sure that those policies are um, translated in such a way that they can be applied directly to the application. So it was really the, the whole, um, uh, Cisco Secure for Application was built on that fundamental problem. How can we reduce that friction between those two organizations? And and you had touched a little bit on on management tools and you know how how many management tools are out there. Um, there are a lot of vul vulnerability management tools that SEC and app teams use. Why do you need another one here? Yeah, sure. Good question. So, um, and we get that that question a lot uh, from uh, customers and even uh, as we we work with partners. And you got to look at vulnerabilities in different levels, right? So um, there are uh, certainly vulnerability scanners out there and companies that specialize this in this in identifying vulnerabilities in underlying operating systems. So you know, think of uh, a vulnerability in a Linux kernel. Um, that's uh, you know one whole area of vulnerability management. There's another area of vulnerability management as far as uh, you know shrink wrapped applications or applications you purchase from vendors where those that vulnerability is really managed by the vendor you purchased the application from. Then there's a third set of uh, vulnerability management on the applications that your organization is developing. And that becomes fundamentally more difficult um, in that you may be dependent upon libraries that are being used in your application and that library has a vulnerability. So how do you go about, uh, go through your organization and figure out where that vulnerable library has been used by all of your developers. And that's really the, the, uh, the, the area of vulnerability management that we're focused on with AppDynamics. And I figured I'd, I'd show you really quick um, and give you a little taste on what it looks like. And so uh, this is the AppDynamics for Cisco Secure Application Interface. Um, and some of it is, uh, you know, should be familiar if anybody has, um, played around with AppDynamics, but we certainly go out and we uh, discover the application and we can see um, all of the applications that are registered with the system. But if I get into the vulnerability question, I can start looking at the different vulnerabilities that we're discovering. And these are vulnerabilities within application libraries, right? That a, a developer is using within their application. And I can start drilling into those and, and uh, look at um, we're mapping these back to uh, particular CVEs. So this particular one has, has to do with the struts plugin uh, for Apache struts. And um, you know that, that in and of itself is part of the infrastructure that is delivering the application itself. So this, uh, again, would be something somewhat different than um, what you may be identifying with some other vulnerability management tools in your organization. And then finally, it's the, uh, you know, combining that vulnerability with detecting active attacks. So, of course, the, the reason why you're concerned about a vulnerability is that it could be exploited. And so we're not only looking at vulnerabilities, but we're looking at 
um, how can we better detect and reduce uh, or actually increase the efficacy of how we're detecting that attacks, those attacks. And we can do that by, since we're actually running inside the application itself, we can, we have um, better visibility into how those attacks are being um, executed, right? So it's, it's far, um, we can increase the efficacy of those attacks much better by me being inside the application versus looking at it from a, a WAF or, you know, an IPS IDS perspective. And it's not to say that those are going away, but working hand to hand with those other tools, we can reduce the false positive rate on, on a lot of these uh, exploit attempts. Uh, we could potentially use existing tools um, for, for uh, security perimeter attacks or sorry, to, to limit the perimeter attacks. Uh, but this improves the efficiency and efficacy of, of the identification of those attacks. Is, am I getting that right? Precisely, yeah. yeah. So okay. we're not saying that you no longer need a WAF or you no longer need an IPS or IDS. This is to supplement those and to increase the, um, well, we're really to de decrease the false positive rate, right? Um, and we can work hand in hand with those tools to improve on that. And we could also do some other things, and this was a, a subtle thing when we first developed it, but it's when I, when I go through this with a lot of our customers and partners, it's the thing that jumps out at them the most. And this is something that you can't, uh, the only way you can deliver this kind of uh, information is being inside the application. And that's mm -hmm. kicking out a stack trace when an exploit occurs, right? So, um, and this, when, when I show this to developers, this is usually That's where so their cool. eyes light up. Because, <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> right. So, so before before we started doing things uh, and developing the system, if there was an exploit in an application, usually the workflow is okay. I'll pull some logs from a WAF and maybe from an IDS, and then we turn those over to the development team, and they try and figure out reverse engineer what occurred. But by delivering a stack trace you're giving an explicit map of exactly what occurred and where it occurred in the application, which the end result should be that you're able to fix the application faster, right? And with uh, less effort instead of guessing. So that, it seemed like a subtle thing, but it's a, it's a pretty huge piece of telemetry that we can give to a customer with this kind of approach versus other things. This is fantastic. Um, so Keith, uh, can you give us a little clue into your background? Um, you know, I hear through the grapevine that used to be a, a uh, network guy, and and so uh, I'm curious yeah, as yeah. to your transition into application security or AppSec. Nah, that's a good question, and you know a, a lot of um, the partners and customers that we're working with are going through the same uh, same transition. But yes, yeah, certainly my background uh, even before I mean I've been doing security for 10, 15 years, but even before that I was just a you know routing and networking uh, person, and then um, yeah for the uh, the remaining time, it was mainly network security, and that's uh, certainly Cisco's strength, right? And we're not saying that network security is no longer important, but um, you, anyone who's paying attention does know that, you know, the there is the going blind problem on the network, right? I mean, with the advent of more encryption, easier encryption, um, it just makes it harder to come up with some of these conclusions. Um, that we're used to do by looking at clear text traffic, right? And we we have uh, products around that that can that can um, solve some of that. But certainly, if you're inside the application, all of those problems go away, right? I mean, you don't have to worry about encryption because you're inside the application itself. You're seeing exactly what's going on. So when I started looking at the going dark problem, um, it became apparent to me that you know security is moving uh, to appsec is going to become fundamentally more important. Um, as time goes on. So uh, that's where, where I gravitated to a number of years ago, and that's where I'm, I'm working right now. So, uh, and again, it's to be uh, clear, it's not that those other things are going away, but you're going to see, uh, and certainly in talking to our customers, there's huge teams within their departments that they're building around application security. So the, the size of those teams are certainly uh, growing much faster than they were before because of you know what I just explained, the, the going dark problem, yeah. and you can just get... Right here, I mean, a stack trace. You can't get those kind of things out of a network, right? And there, there are things that no. you can pull out at the application level that you just can't get out of a network, but you still need it. You still need the, you know, the firewalls, I don't think, are going away, or IPS or IDS, but these are just new things we could bring to the table. That's awesome. And we're all we're all about that mind shift in uh, here at DevNet, going from, you know, your, your network engineering to app, app developer and uh, and 
you know, helping that transition. But um, this has been great and very informative. Before we let you go, uh, we always ask our guests this and uh, would like to ask you, uh, Keith, if, if you had a superpower, what would it be and why? Wow. Yeah. It's probably the hardest <laughs> question. <laughs> I, I would have to go with... I would have to go with teleportation, both in space and time, because then that kind of gives you all these other powers, right? If I can go space anywhere at any point in time, and then, uh, you know, you can go back in time and play stock markets and all sorts of things. So you get you get power. With it, right? so I would go with teleportation. Right? The, the Biff Tannen, the Biff Tannen effect. <laughs> Good by mind. Yep, there you go. <laughs> right. cool. cool. Well, uh, thank you, Keith, for joining us this week. Um, and thank you, Snackers, for, for joining us in this episode and catch us next week.